years ago. It seems like yesterday. Uh, alongside me is uh, Sue Smith. Sue, uh, Japan going down against Denmark. Friendly or not, that isn't a great start for the Japanese. Not at all. And you want to win your first game. And, and like you mentioned, especially when it's, you know, it's, it's such a... It is a mini World Cup, isn't it, the Algarve Cup? And I think it's something that you want to prepare right you want to make sure that you you win every game and, and perform in every game and and for me watching part of that game japan didn't perform they didn't perform how we know that they can well sweden remember finished fourth in the last four algarve cups here's shundaga guiding them these days of course for the last few years since she stepped down as the coach of the usa and looking to guide Sweden, one better than they did last year when they went down in the semi-finals uh, against Japan, ironically. But Germany, expectations high as ever. There's Kramer. And they, of course, will be looking to emulate what the male team did by winning the World Cup last year. This is Lauder going deep. 19 is out. She's out. Well, what an opening that is. Marazan has just scored one of the goals of the week. I don't care where we're going to be going after this, but that was quite magnificent technique. What an excellent strike that was. It was just a, it was a lovely looped ball in, wasn't it, from the left-hand side? But the way Marazan came onto the ball with her right foot, it was, I think it was on the half volley, wasn't it? Just oh, flew into the top corner. And I'm completely with you there, Tim. I think that's, that's potentially goal of the tournament straight away. But it's just, you can see, it's just, it's a lovely whipped ball in. But as the ball bounces, this is a hard technique to do. And you can just see she just glides the ball right into the top corner. Goalkeeper Lindahl had no chance. No lot of shedding in the starting lineup for these Swedes today. Doesn't mean to say she won't be coming on. And the, the Swedish record against Germany is, is not a good one. It doesn't stand up to too much uh, scrutiny. 2009, the last time they won that game. They actually went 3 0 up inside 40 minutes in that game. And a significant number of the players are still playing as well these days. Uh, Pop's going to uh, tee this up. This is going to be ladder for number two. Well, this is embarrassing for the Swedes. It, it really is. Two goals inside the opening two minutes. And the, the defence was absolutely nowhere. Oh, my goodness. Germany have come out of the blocks absolutely flying. And you can see. Sweden don't know what's going on, but the defence here, there's two players against three German attackers, you know, so they could have passed it to anybody. We're not, looking at, we're not looking at inexperienced, insignificant defenders here. Not Sembrand, Fischer, Rubinson. I, I don't know where Rubinson is. Rubinson's actually come across to try and help out in the middle. She needs to stay with her player. She needs to open her body up because it's just an easy finish from Lauder. But 2-0 down, we've not even had five minutes, I don't think. Sweden need to get a grip of the game and really quickly. Well, those of you watching might have seen Germany in action against uh, England not long ago and they looked in fairly dominant mood then but Germany there's a Kran and uh, Henrik well what must be going through her mind something to the tune of thank god it's not the world cup finals <laughs> because what a disaster this would have been had it have been there's Sjogren Hendricks over there once again to make the challenge the a Frankfurt defender is only making a seventh appearance here tonight and you'll be able to see her in the shirt of Frankfurt in the Champions League in a couple of weeks uh, when they take on Bristol I was about to say Bristol City then but uh, it is <laughs> Bristol without the city Jakobsen down there. Hendricks again with the throw. This is now psychological, isn't it, for, for Sweden? How do you cope with going two goals down within five minutes against Germany? You know, it's it's not against the team that's that's going to be easy to break down. Well, you've got to, you presumably got to sit there and think, right, the game actually starts from now. Let's just forget about those two goals. Yeah, I think that's your your only option to get yourself back into the game. Rubinson. a bit better. Here's Nala Fischer. Kind of been too many international games that she's been involved in where they've been 2-0 down after such a short period of time here. She commands the back, you know, she, she, she's the, the solid 
centre half that, that makes sure that her players around her are, are, are in the right shape. And both goals, fullbacks have just gone missing. There's Sembrandt. 18, there was Samuelson. But I think you said it's important what Sweden do here now is actually keep a degree of composure about their game, not go charging after everything. Yeah, it's massively important because you've got a tendency to do that. You think we're two goals down, we now need to start forcing things. They need to just play their game and stick to the game plan that they had originally, even though, you know, it, it's obviously gone a little bit to, to pot now, but I think it, it's something that they have to remain calm. Well, nine of this 11 played against Germany last October. Uh, so it's not as if there's anything new, really, in the German squad, apart from the fact that they've left a few, a few top players out, such as the depth and the strength of their squad. A seven there was Dahlqvist. There's Fischer. Marazan with a 21st goal for the international team in a 43rd appearance today. That was Aslani. I think it was a foul. But what the Germans do so well, they get two and three players around the ball and they stop Sweden from playing. That you know They've done that from, from the first minute, lots and lots of pressure. Not too many goalkeepers better than the goalkeeper Germany have got. The captain, Nadine Angara, organising everything there. You can see Nida Fischer right at the front of that pack of blue shirts. As Lani tried to get close to the ball as well. Also, Sembrandt was forward then. Back it comes to Samuelson. There's uh, an incident there, and it's going to be a free kick to Germany. Well, there is Sylvie Knight. It will be celebrating her 10th anniversary in the job come June. Had very immediate successes with the uh, under-19s and the youth teams of Germany when she took over. It was a natural progression to see her step into the uh, full-time role, taking over from Tina Meyer. But for all of the achievements, and remember Germany are the current European champions, they still was a massive underperformance on home turf. There's Alushi in the World Cup final four years ago. And the only way to wipe that away is to go on and win it. Without a doubt, and I think that's something that they're determined to do. And they were going through a little bit of a transitional period, weren't they, at that point? And I think now those young players have got that experience. They've, they've been to a World Cup, they know what it's all about. And they seem to be, for me, getting better with every game I watch them. Strong league. And a strong national team as well. That's the challenge of Ribbinson. There's Sembrandt into Fisher. 126th cap today for Fisher. Uh, she's two behind Tunibra. But, uh, she's a couple behind uh, Lotta Sherlin, who's going to be knocking on the door of uh, 150 by the end of... Well, certainly she could be by the end of the uh, month, actually. And they've got a couple of uh, friendies left to play. There's Fulkerson. Lindahl in goal. Player known to those of you, of course, who watch the Women's Super League over in the UK, or in England, rather. The Chelsea ladies' keeper is Fisher. 
Lovely ball over the top, looking to try and get that into the path of uh, Jakobsen. Yeah, it's a nice ball into the channels, and I think that's what, what Sweden are going to have to do. Jakobsen's got pace, she can get in, and I think with the German fullbacks liking to push on, I think that's where the, the space will be for, for Sweden. So if they can play those long diagonal balls, there's no reason why Jakobsen can't get on the end of them. Just need to do more of that, be a little bit more direct, I think. Well, a much better five minutes the Swedes have had than the first five. Yeah, and, and fair play to them. They've, they've managed to, to settle it down because when it, when it was 2-0 after five minutes, I worried for them. Um, but, but thankfully, they've started to play the ball around and they've started to just have that little bit of composure. And like you said, they've just got to start from now. You know, they're 2-0 down. They've got to go back to that game plan that they originally had and try and get a goal as soon as possible to settle the nerves even more. Four of the last six meetings, Germany ha haven't actually let Sweden score against them. This is Hendricks keeping it in play. Was Alushi, tennis Marazan. is a player that we saw coming through the German youth setup, playing with the under 19s, always stood out as a player you just knew literally from the first time you saw her that she had the more than just potential you just knew she was going to actually elevate her career yeah. to full international status and she just fit in so quickly i think that's what's so good about their you know the german setup the fact that they they play the same way throughout their team so when they come into the senior team they know exactly what's expected of them she's a key player for germany and still only really young as many of them are as marazan as into Alushi, who's really now one of the old guard, Alushi. Hendrik Zett being chased by Jakobsen. Into Kran. It's really good work, that is, by Lauda. Oh, she's been on the left, she's been on the right, Lauda. Yeah, she works so hard. You can see for her team, she's back there defending. Then she's scoring goals. She's um, she's a, a very good player for Germany and a, a very good team player. Short to Marajan. Gives it away, Marajan, to Sega. There's Fischer. On to the head of Wensing. There's Rubinson. This is a really interesting tactical battle here now. The Swedes try to apply pressure to, to Germany, but they just can't get close to the penalty area. They can't get around the outside of the fullbacks, and they can't get through the middle. No, they can't, and, and you see, you know, the German side, uh, they're the ones that are applying the pressure, and they're able to get one and two players around the ball and, and stop Sweden from, from playing. Here's Aslani, who's done just that first time. They've got around the fullbacks, Aslani. Well, that'll give them a bit of hope that it can be done. Kramer was bypassed this time. That's out of play. Good play, that, by Aslani. As a 17 is Sega. That's who they need more on the ball, Aslani. I like to see her when she just drops a little bit deeper just behind, maybe playing just behind a front two so she can get on the ball and find those little pockets of space to make things happen. She seems like she's playing a little bit further upfield today. Well, if you've just joined us, Japan, the world champions, have been beaten by Denmark. And uh, what is good to see about some of these results we're seeing in these competitions is that is the fact that there's nothing predictable. They always used to say it was Bobby Robson, wasn't it, who came out with that. There's no more easy games in international football. Well, there isn't. With the, the women's game, the gap is narrowing significantly. Yeah, it really is. And I think that's, you know, there's always been the, the top two, maybe three nations. And now sports science is getting better. So the fitness of all the players, technically, tactically, everyone's improving. And, and like you say, it, it's really hard to predict, but that makes it 
a more enjoyable, entertaining match, not knowing who's going to win before it even starts. This is Sega. Another who's playing these days over in France as the, the league over there has been built around some real quality imports as well these days. That battle between the French and the German leagues, certainly that we've seen in the Champions League, is uh, still raging away. Now look out for the position of Pop. How are they going to play this, Germany? There's Gersling. 13 is Sasic. Vent a run there. Sasic is in. Just couldn't direct where she was going with the ball there. But again, it was as if the defending suddenly went into slow motion for the Swedes again there. Yeah, the movement and the Germans, when they, they go forward on, on set pieces, like you could see Sasic there, the way she timed her run was perfect, but the Swedish defenders don't seem to know where they where each of them are. And, and like you said, they're not inexperienced players. They've played together on a good number of occasions and, and they need to, obviously we see the movement of Germany and, and they need to try and prevent that from, from happening, especially on set pieces like that. Landmark day for Sasic here today because it's a 100th appearance of the German national team. Jakobsen has gone through the middle. This is Folkerson. There's one player that Germany have had the odd problem with. It has been Folkerson because she's she's got something of a, of a free role there. She's appearing all over the place, left, center, and right. Yeah, and I think she's got that ability. She's got that versatility to do that. But it's, it's where do you play? Sometimes you can be too versatile. <laughs> And I'll be, I'll, initially, I'm, I'm just moving where I'm being placed her every minute that we've been playing here so far because she's picking up a different position as she is in there again. Is Hendricks then with the throw in? That's Darkvist. We're looking for the figure of Gersling who came into view there. As Fisher, uncharacteristically poor ball from her. Alushi, no support with Alushi yet. Slaudet was getting up there, so too was Kramer. Alushi, player was injured out of the World Cup a few years ago, you might remember. But uh, no longer these days, the bright young thing of this German team where everything was looking to be built around it. You know, one of the old stages almost. There's Sega. Makes you feel really old, doesn't it? It does a bit. <laughs> I mean, she, you know, we've seen many of these players now uh, throughout the entire course of their international careers. There's Rubinson. Oh, she has uh, Sasic going in to make the challenge. Sweden are just holding on to the ball a little bit too long, giving Germany that, that chance to, to press them and, and win the ball back in, in high areas. Dangerous play. Rubinson it is then. Goes short again, shows a bit too much of that to pop. Again, constantly in transition, this German team. You can see the movement of the players. Pops just come over to the left side of midfield here. There she is. Now moving through the center. Very difficult for the Swedes to get a handle on where the threat is going to be building and where it's coming from. Layoff by Jakobsen. And should be the keeper's ball. Angara is there to stop Haslani.
There was a pop, but then coming out of pressure. Good work by Aslani. Fisher giving chase. Oh, you could see what she was trying to do, but just got it all wrong then, did uh, Linda. Nice work again by Pop. There is goes. Well, I was talking to you about uh, Alex Pop uh, before we came on air. There is a tendency that if anybody goes nearer, she goes down. I mean. <laughs> I think she actually fell over the ball at that point. She seemed to get her, her feet caught, and she's, she's such a good, talented player, and it's it's doesn't not need good to, do to it, say really. she doesn't. She doesn't. And that's something you don't want in the women's game, because that's something that I feel, you know, players are very honest. They go down when they're brought down, but she has got a tendency to go down a little bit too easily. Averages a goal every other game. You might recall that amazing Champions League final of last year. The one that uh, Marta looks as if she was going to put her name up in lights. Well, Wolfsburg came back to stun the pop part of the team. Constantly on the move is Sasic there. Well, referee wants a word with that. Who's back in waiting for the ball? Well, very nearly, very nearly. Again, just slightly over hit. Yeah, I think if that ball could have just been whipped in a little bit, I think Sasic was uh, was through on goal with a free header. Turns by uh, Samuelson only to Aslani. As Certainly a better playing surface down here than there is in the game that we saw earlier involving Japan and the Danes. Certainly befitting of two teams of the international stature of these two. Sasic goes down. Oh, she's going to get a yellow card here. She's trying to say it was, uh, it was shoulder to shoulder. I have to say, the referee Karina uh, Vitulano of Italy. So, but again, how much did Sasic add to the end of that? I, I mean, know. To be honest, I, you know, I've got to stick up for Nala Fisher there. I think she, she was just strong. They were both going for the, the ball together, and yeah, she went down a little bit too easy for me because Sasic has got pace. She could get, she could get by, knock the ball past her. She'll remember that. They both play in the same league. Remember. <laughs> Might not be able to get her back today, but there'll be other days before <laughs> the end of the season. Definitely. The card is well and truly marked, that's for sure. This is Marazan trying to just mix it up a little bit. Away they go, poorly done by Sjögren. Player of her experience should have done a bit better than that. Alex Pop is going to keep it in play here. Uh, Loud air is in there. And look at the space behind. It's a good claim that by Lindahl, because the white shirts were just filling up that six-yard area. Lindahl read that very well, and I think if Pop could have just got a head up a little bit sooner and, and maybe played the ball on the floor, there was a couple of German players coming in at the, at the far post. This is almost like a time as this back four has never seen each other before. It's, it's unbelievable because that's something what Sweden are, are genuinely good at, you know, the defensive structure. They normally sit quite tight and then try and hit on the counter-attack, but it's gone terribly wrong today. There's Venzing. Oh, Vincent got that all wrong. Apologies from the Wolfsburg defender. Can't even blame the bobbles, can you? Well, not on this pitch. You <laughs> certainly can't. There's Samuelson. Handball. Run, turning into a bit of a problem here as Lani in the penalty area and Vensing in to make the challenge again as Lani wanted it just rolled into her path then the pass was on she just didn't 
get picked out. And Hendricks closed down there by Jakobsen. Got to say, Jakobsen has put a shift in, you know, for this first 25 minutes. She's working so hard to close the ball down. I just feel the midfielders need to get a little bit higher with her to try and support that. Sergren. Rubinson into Sega will drop to Rubinson again. They're going to have to be quicker moving the ball in that final third because Germany just get bodies back behind the ball and every avenue is closed off. Yeah, they do. It's got to be one and two touch and it's got to be popped off around the German defence because, like you say, they're, they're back in numbers. They defend very, very well, Germany, and then they hit at such pace. That's brilliantly cut out. That was by Fisher. Really was. Sega. Again, looking for the outlet here. Samuelson. Both of these two teams are putting in a real shift. And when they up the tempo of their passing, they tend to lose control after maybe one or two touches. And Germany pick possession up again, as they did there. And Samuelson. Marazan. Down goes Sebrat. We've got just over 20 minutes of the first half left. Here's the challenge of Alushi. I think what's so good about the German national team is when they lose the ball, you can see they do everything in their power to win it back within, you know, a couple of seconds. State of mind, isn't it, really? They've got that, you know, you don't see them sulking and thinking, oh, I've just lost the ball, I'll walk back into position. They will do everything to, to get back and, and their teammates will help them out with that. Well, such as the competition for places. And again, you can see a great example of what it, you just said there. There's a crummer. Underperformance really is not allowed. There's loud air. There's uh, Hendrix. Lucy Marazan has gone wide, popped with the little step over. And Sega into Sjögren. Talk about the others uh, making significant milestones in terms of appearances at international level. Today is their 205th appearance, which is some achievement, really, over the years. What a loyal servant she's been. Again, good work from Hendricks, but Aslani is still there. And Samuelson now with the throw in. Sjogren still there. Seeing it up. Oh, 2 1. <laughs> it was Sega who hit it, but it took a deflection on route. And Sweden are back in the game here. Much, much better play from Sweden. That's where they need to get. They need to get out wide because, like I mentioned earlier, the fullbacks for Germany like to get forward, and that's where the space is. And you can see it just took it that little bit of skill, a little bit of quality. I think it was a nutmegs on the, the far side. And then that's lovely. Little, little nutmegs. And then she looks up sees the space and hits it and it does take a massive deflection past past anger i think probably anger would have had it covered other than that but sort of venting i think isn't it i think it is yeah but 2-1 you know that it's game on now isn't it sweden have done well to to contain themselves to to get control back of the game done just that and done very well indeed um, again built on real hard work nothing else to it Two goals to nil down inside two minutes.
Always plenty of support for both of these nations wherever you go. See plenty of Swedish flags in the crowd here. You can hear them cheering now, can't yeah. you? Here's Fischer. Ooh, she's got a stretch there. She's going to lose out again. Sasic is through the middle. Pops not been quite at it there, actually. I'm surprised she never got to that ball quicker and laid it off. Yeah, that's that's unlike Pop. But that's an awful ball into Nyla Fisher. Don't put your centre-half under pressure like that. There's time to play the ball and there's time to just completely clear your lines. And I think when you can see... The German attackers pressing. You've just got to get rid of it. There's Rubinson with the header. Down it comes to Kramer. Louder. Kramer doing her best to get up in support. Now, as you said, the German fullbacks love to get forward. And Kramer's out of position here now. This is where, of course, they miss Lotte Schelling with her movement and her runs off the ball where she drags defenders out into wide positions and allows everybody to steam through the middle. Definitely, and that's something you can tell that they're missing because they're winning the ball and they're looking up. And you can see Jakobsen's trying to do that. Tell you what, nobody likes to believe or think they're a, a one-player team, but and Sweden certainly aren't that, but they really do look lacking in that area when Shailene isn't playing. And you think about how they're ever going to be replacing her, one of the best players in the world of her time. This, though, is Zalushi. And Pop is going to break in behind Sembrat here. Pop's in here, and Pop produces the save from Lindahl. But again, it didn't look it didn't look as if it was full of conviction that from Pop. No, it was it was a nice break again from Germany. They break at such pace. You can see that was in their own half, and it was a nice a nice run from Pop. She held her held her run quite well. Nice ball in, and but I think she could have struck through the ball a little bit more. Lindahl did well to to keep the ball out, but you can just see the pace that Germany break at. Sweden can't keep up with them. Yeah, you could see she just took it into a stride. I had a quick look up to see if Sasic was in a better position. So Sasic is right on the near post. Are they going to go short or look for the flick on? And that is one area that they shouldn't be outdone in. There's the pop. Got an average of a goal every other game internationally which is a pretty good record that's not bad average you would like to have seen her be a little bit more clinical in that that shot but seems to have been around for years she's 24. Wow. Uh, that is all she is alex pop so the play that she is now she's still got so much more to come Oof. Well, they literally, remember, had to drag Birgit Prinz into retirement. You imagine she might be the same. We might have another 10 years <laughs> of watching Alex Pop terrorize defenders. Here's Kramer. Venzing. Good work again. That was by Laudere. Keeper was off a line and was very quick to get back there. Clever play that, wasn't it? Seen Lindahl off a line and, and went to try and lob her. That's definite confidence. I was going to say, there's no shortage of confidence there. There's Fisher. Lindahl to Sembrandt. Now yeah, the pace of the game has just dropped a little bit here as we come to the final 10 minutes of the first half. Sweden don't want to concede another one before half time. You, they will see the two sides of Sundaga when they go in, when they, the utter fury and exasperation of giving away those two goals so early on. And then 
She'd be quite proud of the way her team yeah. have dug in and fought back here. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a, a really good point. And I think, you know, if they hadn't have done that, um, I'm sure Just they would have got a little bit, yeah. I think they would have got a little bit of um, a telling off at half time. But the fact that they have kept going, they have got themselves back into the game. And now it's, it, it's all to play for. And, and she's got to be proud that they've done that. Sjogren is the player who's down injured here. Not easy to recover from knocks like that when you get to Sjogren's age. <laughs> yeah, it just takes that little bit longer, doesn't it, recovery? And I think she's probably got a dead calf. There she is. Pearson Daga. Well-traveled, well-schooled, very successful. It's funny, isn't it? She managed to get that success at the Olympics, but just fell short in the in the World Cup finals. She did. She's. I really like her. I think she's really entertaining. I think she's. You know, she she tries to play football the right way. Loves a song. And she loves a song. Yeah, loves a song. <laughs> uh, I that think will they, live uh, long in the will. memories of seeing her accept that award at the uh, FIFA World Player of the Year awards, where she took the microphone and belted out a version. <laughs> I have no idea what it was. Um, but it was from Sweden, so it was melodic. Yes. Um, you know, and there was a very catchy chorus. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, highly respected. She really is, and you can see that the players play for her as well. You know, they respect her as a manager and a coach, and I think they like her. Like you say, she's, she's very entertaining, and I'm not sure she'll be giving a song at half-time today. <laughs> Maybe if they win at the end. <laughs> well, Pop is limping a little bit as you can see there and i'm wondering whether or not she was actually 100 percent fit when she took to the field today there's fisher into sembrandt Given away to Sjogren. But again, very quick to recover their lines, Germany. Sega is going to have another go. And Angela isn't going to be beaten twice from a distance of significance. Zalushi. It's been times in the game when uh, Lucia has been just a step behind. She was, she could have maybe made a challenge for the goal, but she didn't, and has given the ball away quite a lot in midfield. Yeah, not really like her either. Quite uncharacteristic, isn't it, of, of Lucia? She's she's a player that, that does keep the ball very well. Sasic is going to give chase. Sembrandt. Nice and calmly done until the second pass where they give it away again. Loud air is back post. Unable to get the ball across. Is Fisher into Sjogren and again? Got to remember, I suppose we, we did have that discussion about some of these players. Their seasons are at different stages, but it's not really an excuse you can put onto the Swedes because most of them are playing. Yeah. In the non-Nordic leagues. Yeah, I think that was just sloppy, sloppy passes. And, and there's been a couple of times where that has happened. And yes, both teams are, are putting a lot of effort and a lot of energy into, into pressurizing and, and defending. But when they get the ball, they just need to calm it down a little bit, take a touch and, and find a pass. Travis Sassage leaves it. Pop has a go at it. As Hendrix Ward into Alushi looking for the return. But again, it's overhits. 
Yeah, it's just that quality of pass in the, in the final third. And Germany definitely had that in the first five minutes, but, but since then, Sweden have, have got their shape back better than what, what they initially had. And I think we've, we've had a different game to uh, the one we were going to get had those two early goals not gone in. It's been played at, played at a much higher tempo. Yeah, it has. And I think just like you mentioned, probably the last 10 minutes, it's, it started to slow down slightly. Sjogren's in the middle, Aslani is in there, but again, that is what the Germans do so well. Only once have they got in behind those fullbacks. You might get the ball in a wide position, but they never get a cross in. They're so determined not to let that happen, and they cover for each other so well. Is it crab it's such a simple facet of the game, isn't it? Don't let the wide players get a cross in. Yeah. There's a pop looking for Alushi. Samuelson is with her. No support from Hendricks this time. She's waiting for her to get over the halfway line. There she is, Marazan, who's been quiet for a while after that stunning start, but then she moves into position here. Marazan. I think she's done her job, hasn't she, in the first minute with that wonder strike. Brazil, China, by the way, the other two teams in this group. Going short to Sasic this time. Lauder has stayed forward for this. She's going to get on the end of it. Free header again for Lauder, who you can tell by the reaction was very disappointed. She was. I think she thought she should have scored. And I just mentioned that the, the Swedish defence seemed, the shape had seemed to have got better. But again, a free header from a, you know, a, a crossing, which was a good ball in. But whether Germany have said that, whether because they seem to be getting a lot of crosses into the box and... They're getting on the end of them, but it's just that, can they finish now? 3-1, again, it's, it, that would be a tough scoreline for Sweden to come back to. There's Rubinson. We'll see some of the goals, by the way, at halftime from uh, Japan and their loss with Denmark. Look at Laudeau's position there. You can see it wasn't great from Rubinson. She was trying to get into an onside position, came running out and just ran straight past her. And completely missed the thing. But for me, it was the short corner. Only one player went out. It was easy for Germany. Play the ball out, whip the ball in. And it was uh, Jakobsen who you commented at put in a real shift yeah, she's worked so hard for the team and she's the one that's been causing germany more problems just by pressurizing by closing the ball down and she might not win the first ball but then another swedish player will come in and, and maybe win the second ball but she's she's definitely put a, a real shift in well at least they've done something albeit with a little bit of interjection from venzing that they don't do too often in recent years which is actually score against germany as <laughs> a dark touch you can see there there was no other options there was like two three german players around her she didn't have a a player to play with Interesting to see what Sundaga does, if anything, in terms of tactical direction uh, that she gives her team after the halftime interval, because more of the same isn't really uh, an option here, because you think that barring that one stroke of luck that they had, Germany might c cope. Here comes Hendricks looking for as or Alushi, rather. Alushi beaten to it by Samuelson. I think the first thing she's got to say is defensively they've got to be better. They've got to keep the ball better when they get it. It just it seems to keep coming back. And there needs to be options. You know, the midfield movement needs to be better. Sometimes the defenders are looking and there's no options in midfield. Well, they've got a situation here. Now they're waiting for some support here. Now Jakobsen, good defending by Vensing, but at the expense of a corner. And that'll give a chance for Nyla Fisher to get forward. <laughs> Two additional minutes at the end of the first half here on what's been a, a really good opening day of football at this Algarve Cup. 
Short corner taken, and again, there's no excuse really, is there, from that position for that to happen, and Alushi to come away with it, but she's given it away. Uh, back to Rubinson, needs to swing this ball in. Well, a chance come and gone. Yeah, as an attacking player in the box, you would be going mad right now, and 2v1 on a short corner, and, you know, the German defender came away with it. Marazan. Very, very narrow, Rubinson then, with a lot of space on the overlap for Sasic, if she can get it. Sjogren with it. That looked like a shove if ever you've seen it, and the referee <laughs> finally concurs. But Rubinson does tend to get drawn in, doesn't she? And there's an awful lot of space wide. Yeah, you've got to. And if you do get drawn in and you're, you're keeping quite a tight, a tight line, you've got to have that pace to get out there, and, and she doesn't seem to have that. So you have to give yourself enough time or enough space that you, you can make it there. <laughs> She'd had enough <laughs> yeah. halfway through that. Get out my way. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, they've got to ensure that the nightmare scenario doesn't occur here, which is a third goal for Germany goes in before the half-time whistle. Especially when a minute ago they had a corner at the other end. That is in it. Well, the whistle had gone. Well, I'm sure there was a whistle in yeah. there somewhere. Loud air got to, got to the ball. Don't know where that whistle came from, but it was certainly very, very evident. But it was obviously being blown by somebody in the crowd. But I hope for a moment, once again, that defence just stood still. Every sort of set piece or, or ball into the box, Sweden are really, really struggling. And yes, the German movement up front is very, very good, but the defenders have to, they've got to, they've got to open their bodies up and they've got to look where the, the players are. Far too easy for Germany. I think that's what I would say if I was Sylvia and I, I'd say get the ball in the box as early as possible. As Rubinson, Shogun turns, and there is the half-time whistle on uh, what we said has been a really good opening day here we began with japan the world champions getting turned over by the danes here inside two minutes germany would two nil up it was a quite sensational start by germany stunning goal from marazan followed up by a second which was albeit a tap-in for lauder uh, sweden regrouped they came back came back very strongly and they got some reward for the hard work a sega shot was deflected in by Vensing and has given us a half-time score germany two sweden one we'll take a short break after the world championships the battle's back on for the crystal globes and it's wide open with everything to play for as they come to the crunch in scandinavia Friday at 1800, the Ski Jumping World Cup with qualifying live from Lati on Eurosport. Be one with your tyres and the road will be one with you. Hanguk Tyres. Official partner of the UEFA Europa League. The International University Sports Federation brings together millions of students worldwide around the same values. Excellence in mind and body. Thousands of students, hundreds of universities participate in FISU events. The rendezvous for the best student athletes. Today's stars, tomorrow's leaders. With the Eurosport app, get live coverage of all your favorite sports. Check on the fortunes of your favorite teams and players. Follow the matches and events live. Download now. Eurosport, the benchmark in sports apps. It's just a ball. But nothing has more power to bring us together. To inspire and to connect us to one another. At FIFA, we believe passionately in the power of football to build a better future. For the game, for the world. 
Eurosport Live Score is available on the iPhone and iPad for free. Every competition, every result, live comments. Eurosport Live Score, available on the App Store. For those European riders who can't wait for springtime, Florida is just the place. With five-star show jumping outdoors against the best of the North Americans. The Winter Equestrian Festival, Wednesday night in the Wednesday Selection on Eurosport. Uh, welcome back then from Sue Smith and from me, Tim Cable. It is, as you can see, Germany 2, Sweden 1 at the interval. And uh, what a first half that was, certainly in the opening two minutes. It was a sensational start. It really was. I don't really think we quite expected uh, what we got. I think it's a fair comment, isn't it? Yeah, without a doubt. First, you know, couple of minutes, the, the way that Germany started with their intensity and their pace, and you can see here, you know, it was just one and two touch. They got the ball out wide, crosses were coming in, and this was just an unbelievable strike with their right foot. It was on the half volley. And, you know, to do that in the first few minutes of a game, is, is is unreal you know because i think you're still trying to you know get find your feet but this is just a perfect technique and it was it was with ease wasn't it you know it's like she does that all the time but what you didn't expect was what we had literally half a minute later look at the run of loud air here rubinson absolutely no way and, and and she was getting caught all the time for me every time the ball was coming out wide she was too far across and it was an easy it was a tapping for loud air wasn't it but good break again and they just broke with so much pace and and, and power and, and that was just there again it's, it's a cool calm finish you know it she had a lot of time good but she found Pop, a spot yes way. to look up and, and actually find her Chances are few and far between for the Swedes, but this was the goal, and it came from, or it was built by the veteran Sjokran teeing it up as Sega in it first time. And the deflection coming off of Vensing, we believe here. Just keep an eye on the number 22. She comes out. Yep, there it is. Vensing turns into the ball, and it deflects away from Nadine Angara. That's just unfortunate as a defender, isn't it? Here's Alex Pop. Doesn't look 100% fit. You've seen her limping a bit in the first half. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I think she, she's struggling a little bit. Set plays. Look at the number six again. Loud air. Rubinson comes racing out, and she completely misses her. Uh, she does, and you can just see that they're not... This is an easy ball. This is just like, you know, it's, it's a short corner, play the ball back, and you can just see that they're not opening their body. They're not looking where the, the, the attacking players are. And there it was again. Loud air. And pop with the second one, but Loud air really felt she should have actually won, uh, headed that in. Uh, and so there's a few smiles on the faces of the uh, Swedish, uh, Swedish fans. So we will have a look back when we return at the action from the early game involving Japan and Denmark. And there was a big shock there. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. To ride. Here comes a great new cycling season. And first up, it's the Race to the Sun, an eight-day adventure pushing south through France with the whole spectrum of challenges, including a mountaintop finish and a final time trial. The Paris Nice from March the 8th to 15th, live on Eurosport and Eurosport 2. the most important thing about a sport like this that it's exciting so many of the big nations are out of the podium positions what a relief but no one is going to deny Ben Sagan the Jets victory he 
was the favourite all day long, and he delivered when it was required. Here we go, attacks coming straight away. It's going to be very, very difficult to make up positions. One kilometre to go. Section of the road right now, and it's going to be hit. Oh, my goodness. Oh, can you believe it? Magnificent performance from Hersher. Well, Sumbi floated all the way today. He never looked troubled. He just kept that technique perfect all the way from bottom to top. Oh, it's been very exciting. It's been a lot of motions, lots of ups and downs. Welcome back to Argentina. Behind Michelin, looking to make it three wide on the inside. Oh my goodness me! Fantastic job from the pole position to dominate the race. All sports, all emotions. It's March live on Eurosport. It's the defining biathlon shootout and a double target for World Championship gold plus precious points towards their World Cup tally. And centre stage, Martin Fourcar, the French hotshot, fighting tough opposition not only from the Norwegians. And all eyes on the brilliant Kaisa Makarainen on home snow in her farewell season. Tomorrow at 1700, the Biathlon World Championships live from Contiolati with the mixed relay on Eurosport. Welcome back then from me, Tim Capel and Sue Smith here at the Algarve Cup. And that is the halftime score here between Germany and Sweden. Uh, Germany, very, very good value for their uh, lead here at the interval. Now, coming up a little bit later on, are uh, the French in action against Portugal. Uh, and that's going to be interesting because... Uh, they, they are your fancy for the World Cup, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. I've just watched them a few times this year, and obviously they've beaten Germany, they've beaten some top nations, and they always seem to freeze in the big tournaments, but I think this might be their year. Uh, Eurosport insiders focused on women in combat sport. A real challenge for three ladies who are distinguished in a real men's world of boxing and mixed martial arts. Um, we're going to be talking and meeting Lucia Riker, the Lady Tyson as she's known, Miriam Demar and Rondi Rousey. These women are the real pioneers in their discipline. Top of their game they are. And this is a show you don't want to miss. Million Dollar Ladies, Friday, 2100 CET. Uh, and if you've never seen Miriam Lamar in action, she really is one of the best. And I'll tell you what, Lucia Riker is not far behind her either. So one to wait and see that. Uh, one more break to come. The second half is upcoming live in just a couple of minutes. a great new cycling season and first up it's the race to the sun an eight-day adventure pushing south through france with the whole spectrum of challenges including a mountaintop finish and a final time trial the paris nice from march the 8th to 15th live on eurosport and eurosport 2. the most important thing about a sport like this that it's exciting so many of the big nations are out of the podium positions what a relief but no one is going to deny they're deciding 
deserves victory. He was the favourite all day long, and he delivered when it was required. Here we go, attacks coming straight away. It's going to be very, very difficult to make up positions. One kilometre to go. Six of the road right now, and it's going to be hit. Oh, my goodness. Oh, can you believe it? Magnificent performance from Hirschel. Well, should be floated all the way today. He never looked troubled. He just kept that technique perfect all the way from bottom to top. Oh, it's been very exciting. It's been a lot of motions, lots of ups and downs. Welcome back to Argentina. Behind Michelin, looking to make it three wide on the inside. Oh my goodness me! Fantastic job from the pole position to dominate the race. All sports, all emotions. It's March live on Eurosport. It's the defining biathlon shootout and a double target for World Championship gold plus precious points towards their World Cup tally. And centre stage, Martin Fourcar, the French hotshot, fighting top opposition not only from the Norwegians, but all eyes on the brilliant Kaisa Makarainen on home snow in her farewell season. Tomorrow at 1700, the Biathlon World Championships live from Contiolati with the mixed relay on Eurosport. Welcome back, everybody. From me, Tim Cable and Sue Smith, the Swedes, the first to show from the halftime interval. They trailed Germany by two goals to one. I was looking earlier at the, that team list of the French, and, and people say, oh, French win the World Cup. And then you just run off a few of the names. You're Wendy Renard and Amandine Henry and Les Sommers, Abidi, Lavergé, Tomis, uh, Bujaglia, Burradi, Tini. I mean, this is a top team, isn't it? They really are. And I thought, you know, they... they They've sort of flattered the, to deceive, mm. haven't they, for a lot of the, the major tournaments. But I just think Well, this they year... look great in the group stages. They look yeah. as if they can go on and win anything, yeah. beat anybody. But then when they get to the knockouts, that's when it all goes wrong. Yeah, and I think, you know, so there's got to be something there. But they've, they've had that experience now. They've got to the major tournaments. They've got to the final stages. And I think now it's time for them to go on and actually win something. Because you mentioned those names. They're world-class players. Mm. So, you know, maybe, maybe this year is their year. And the power balance is European-based, isn't it? As opposed to the South, to the Americas and the South Americas. I mean, we know how good the the USA are, but you know, you you'd be surprised now if the top European nations aren't going to be beating the Americas, even if it is in Canada. Yeah, I think so, and I think you know, USA always turn up in big tournaments, don't they? Or the majority of the time. And and we spoke about Canada earlier, and you know, it, it is yeah, the hosts, strong, strong team. We yes. saw them in the under 20s last year, yeah. uh, and strong defenders they produced don't they yeah physically uh, very strong you don't it, it they're difficult to play against right we're going to get a raft of uh, substitutions coming up here uh and your meat tag is uh, going to come on here now now is sasic coming off They do insist on doing this thing, which I suppose makes it a bit easier for us because you can actually see them coming onto the field as opposed to uh, playing for 10 minutes before you realise they've changed three <laughs> players. So Mitag is in. And Leopold is also in. And also Lena Nielsen for Sweden. So then, is it going to be all change in terms of the power base in this game in this 45 minutes, or can Germany increase their lead here? 
think Sweden need to make sure that, that the same thing doesn't happen again in the, in the first half because we know how quickly Germany came out of the blocks and I'm sure that would be something that, that Pearson Dago would have said to her team. You need to, you need to keep it tight first 10 minutes, get into the game and don't give away silly goals. Ooh, Angara very nearly gave it to Jakobsen. It's funny when you look down at a German squad list and you only see three names from, from Bayern Munich, it always looks a bit strange, really. But uh, Jupols, of course, who's, who's playing that these days, the 21-year-old, uh, one of three players from Bavaria, and Maya and Beringer, the others. There's a Kramer. See that uh, Leupoltz has just slotted into midfield there. There's Jakobsen who's in behind as Ladi just found that was played behind her. Good positive play there from Jakobsen and again that'll be something that they will have said that when you get the ball try and face forward and, and have a go at the defence and she's got the pace to do that so knock the ball past them but it was just that final ball wasn't it it was just a little bit like you say behind Aslani. There's Aslani again Jakobsen in the penalty area good start to the second half here for Sweden. Vensing the unfortunate in the first half a deflection Gave the goal. Now look at that. Two players in the penalty area. One stood on the edge of it. And Germany should have this well and truly locked up. As Lani going short here. This is Rubinson. Vensing. Zalkris got a foot to it. Sega's lurking on the edge of the area here. Sega. That's a very good ball by Sega. First time shot in the turn by Jakobsen, but really, really good ball that was by Sega. It was, yeah, and that, that's what Sega's there for. She, she normally just sits in front of the defence and, you know, she, she'll be the one that finds those little passes in there. It was just, it was instinctive, wasn't it? She turned and she, she found the ball to, to, I think it was Jakobsen who, who turned quickly and, and couldn't quite get any power on the shot, but it, it's a positive start from Sweden and that's what they needed to do. I think it's Alex Pop who's actually gone off, isn't it? For uh, Mitak. Looks like it might have been. We said that she was struggling a little yeah. bit, didn't we? Looked like she was limping and, and carrying an injury. Dupont's first touch. Mitak will pick it up here, trying to thread it through to Sasic. Again, Rubinson is drawn very, very narrow again. And they've got to be so careful about that. As uh, Vensinger goes down, takes Aslani with her. It is, I mean, it's cute play, that, isn't it, by Vensinger? I mean, there was nothing else she could do apart from take her down because she, she'd have been off. Yeah. yeah it was a very experienced play, wasn't it? She, like you say, doesn't really matter the free kick there. Looking for Jakobsen, shoulder to shoulder with Kran. And Kran comes out on top. Kran looks very unorthodox when she runs, but when she gets her legs going, she's quick. You know, she kept up with Jakobsen there quite easily. Angara, who's had very little to do in this game, apart from pick the ball out the net once. Murder Fisher, little nudge in the back. Got to be careful. She's already on a yellow card here at Nada Fisher. She doesn't want to end up getting sent off. It was loud out once the return ball, but look how congested it is in the middle of the field there. Nipoltz, who's, uh, as we said, just 21 years of age, this her, uh, 23rd appearance for the German national team. Schogren. He's been in the national team about as long as Leupold has been on the planet. <laughs> and Kramer with the interception. Good interception that was by Kramer as well. Sasic waiting in the penalty area now. Uh, this is Pop. Tries to play it back into a path, but it's Fisher who just sinks to one knee.
Aslani. They've kept a really close eye on Aslani in this game. Kept her on the halfway line, and he very occasionally as she managed to get away from her marker. Here is Jakobsen. Only problem with Jakobsen as well, moving into these positions to pick the ball up, is there's nobody in the area. That's the problem. Oh, she was, she was just offside there. I think when you, you mentioned this, Lani, before, I think... That's, the, that's what she's very good at, and, and Germany have obviously identified that she's their key player and she's the one that's going to get into those little pockets of space and, and pick the ball up and, and try and feed the ball through to Jakobsen and, and other runners, but they've stopped her doing it, and that's, that's the German way. They stop the key players from, from playing. Which is exactly what they've done here again. Now, Lauter is up on the overlap here, races through the middle. They're looking for a potential handball there, and they get it. Sembrat, the player, there's Mitag. I don't think she knew much about that, but it was a it was a handball. Good distance this, there's Marazan. Be a real test. She's such a sweet striker of the ball, Marazan, as we have seen earlier on in this game. I'm sure she will take this. Oh, Pop is over it as well. There's Sasic. It is going to be Marazan. Oh, she's lifted it right over the top of the bar. She just got underneath the ball then, didn't she? She thinks she went for, for power. Hugely experienced keeper, Lindahl. And a hugely experienced defender in Nyla Fischer. Jumping right into Dahlquist was Kramer. There's Aslani, lovely little touch. That is by Aslani. Schlokren's in here, got to hit it first time. And there was no conviction in that whatsoever. She hit it straight at the chest of Angara, and that really should have been either side of her and 2-2. Germany hitting back here very quickly. Sasic is in here. Fischer there to sweep it up at the back. And away come Sweden. Wow. Oh, oh, that was a massive chance for Sweden. What and, a touch from Aslan. Oh, superb. And that's what she can do, and that's why they've stopped the playing. But, yeah, just a little touch, and that just that opened the play up. But, yeah, the, the shot for me was just... Oh, where is Angora oh. going here? Jakobsen is around her. Now, can she keep her cool? Yes, she can. And that Ooh. is a superb equalising goal. Sudaga raises her arms in celebration. But that is a bit of cool, clinical size finishing anger was made to look a bit like an amateur there i'm really surprised at anger because on that initial shot she came out and she, she closed the ball down she made it really difficult angle here i have no idea what she's doing flying out of the box no need to do that there's defenders back helping her out but jakobsen she's been the player for me for sweden she's been constantly pressurizing constantly working hard and it's a here great finish. yeah and i mentioned it's a, you know sometimes it's like composure on the ball Great composure there and, and an excellent finish there. Well, the last victory we could find of the Swedes over Germany was back in 2009. Is this going to be a landmark day and how things turn? You wouldn't have thought we'd have been looking at this from Germany's position of dominance after just two minutes of this game. And Sweden, look at the space for Sjogren's in again here. Completely unmarked. Anger has completely missed it again, but Sjogren just minutes before should have leveled the scores then. Yeah, she should have, and, and like I said, Anger did well to come out and, and close the space down, but yeah, there, was, there wasn't really any conviction on the, the shot, but Jakobsen to equalise was, was excellent, but Anger, she's probably the world's best keeper, and two big mistakes there. Very unlike her.
Well, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's a bit like watching Rubinson in the first half playing in the same position uh, Hendrix is in here because she was completely absent with that lead twice. I think we said earlier, didn't we, that Sweden needed to move the ball quickly in the final third and they did that for, for the chance and then for the, the goal. That's the way they're going to break the German defence down. Germany next in action on Friday against China. You can see that game live and exclusively on Eurosports. Uh, don't forget to join us for that. It's the early kickoff at 1 p.m. Marajan getting it half clear. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? They always say it's one of those converse statements where people say, well, they took the lead too early. <laughs> <laughs> it was too early for them, yeah, as if there's a bad time to go in the league. <laughs> I'd be quite happy, to be honest, going 2-0 up after five minutes. Here's uh, Pop. Alex Pop. Meetag racing into the penalty area now. I'm just really impressed with how Sweden have got themselves back into the game. Love to have been a fly on the wall for that team talk at half-time, that's for sure. Sasic going down again. There's Dahlqvist. Uh, to Sembrandt and to Samuelson. Oh, brilliantly done by Jakobsen again. She really is reveling in this now. And what a poor ball. Did everything right apart from that layoff, and had she have laid it, Aslani was in on goal again. Yeah, it was a it was a good break, a quick turn, and that's what she's been doing all game. She's been looking up. She's her body is half turned as she's receiving it, which was was exactly what you want from a forward player. But then it's just that final ball, overhit it. Ladders in a lot of space. This has got to be laid into Ladders' path. Well. Going for goal from that angle, Mitag really needs to be pulled aside and given a bit of a talking to there, doesn't so. she? It yeah. was a tap-in. Greedy, for... and I think, yeah, with Laude, wasn't it, coming yeah. in? And I think she will have definitely said something here because there was a chance to give it, there was a chance to give it, just took that extra touch and, and then went for goal herself. If she'd have squared it initially... Laude There's two a, of them. Yeah, two of them there. Laude had an, an, open, an open net to just slot the ball home like she did in the first half. Looks like a player who was uh, irritated at being left out and is, I'll show you what I can yeah. do in this second. Definitely. <laughs> there she is. Can she atone for her error? There's Alex Pop. Yeah, I think if, if they score, you can forgive them. But when there's a, a better option, you've got to make the right decision. And, yeah, it was a little bit greedy for me. But they're making those decisions in this event is better than making those decisions and getting it wrong at a World Cup final. Yeah, definitely. And this is the experience, isn't it, to, to have that, to analyse it. And, you know, I'm sure that will be clipped and, you know, it will be sort of said what she should have done a little bit better. There's Sembrandt back over the top and through to Lindahl again. Well, Germany really have had very little meaningful possession. Yeah, it's, it's com the game's completely changed around, hasn't it, from the, the first half, the way that Sweden have come out and, and played and kept the ball so much better than they did in the first half. Don't forget we've got France-Portugal coming up after this, so what a great triple header that's been of uh, top quality women's international football here on the eve of the World Cup finals, which you can see again live and exclusively from start to finish. Here is Pop looking for Mitag. You can see what she was trying to do with that pass. It was just in between the, the full back and the centre half, but again, just over hit a little bit. Good jump that was by Leopold's. 
Good turn too by Marazan. Now she's got support with Laudet again. It's great running off the ball from Laudet to find these spaces. Gets it in. Sasic is there. Sasic thought she might have tried to back heel that in then. And then driven across by Kramer. Better play from Germany. Yeah, very. Germany, they can be direct, they can be powerful when they pick the ball up, and, and that's what they did. And it was, um, again, not the best defending from Sweden, but a chance from Germany that, that they've managed to, to keep out. There goes Jakobsen, taken down again there. Better play from Andrews, just trying to uh, close some of the gaps up down that right-hand side. They've been getting in far too easily. Kron giving it away this time. Jakobsen, but a quick look up, there's nobody there really, there's Sega, they need some width now, and they'll get it from Rubinson, Rubinson, Dahlquist, could potentially have offered herself there, Dahlquist, they've done well to get a corner out of that. Yeah, Rubinson did well actually to, to make that break forward, and again, just be positive and, and have a go. But yeah, because Sweden's wide players come in field, that's where the fullbacks need to overlap and, and make that make the pitch big really Rubinson did well into the sun and off the head of Leopold's well, we might have had a couple of subs on the hour mark but nothing doing just minor Swedes Sergren and sails over the head of Dahlqvist. Hasn't really had an awful lot of involvement in the game, Dahlqvist. No, she hasn't, and, and often she just, you know, employs herself in that role, and, you know, she, she, she probably goes unnoticed a lot of the time, but I think some of the work that she does... For me... Well, welcome back again. Apologies if you just lost pictures there, but again, uh, nothing has happened here. It's uh, a bit of uh, weather-related interruption via your uh, satellites. But everything is fine now. 2-2, two -two, and this game is very finely poised here. And it is the Swedes who have had the best of the game, certainly in the second half. Is Kramer. Pop wanted the ball played early. Here she comes. And it's getting up in support here. Sasic waiting in the penalty area. She'll jump for this, but so too will Lindahl. Marazan. Aslani has it now. Bit of space to run into for Aslani. And how many times have we seen needless uh, errors like that from the Swedes in possession in the middle of the field? Yeah, really sloppy, because that, that was a good chance for, for Sweden to break. I think Lindahl does really well here to just anticipate. What about the, the performance of, of Hendricks? Sometimes she does appear to be a, a, a bit slow to get up in, in support uh, of whoever's playing in front of her. In that occasion, it's Pop, whereas there's much more of an understanding between Kramer and, and Lauda, certainly on the opposite side. Zagren 
holding up Germany. Tough afternoon this for Sembran so far. There's Fulkerson and Venzing. She is a real threat, this girl, as Lani. The more they can get her into this game, the more of a threat the Swedes will be. Yeah, she's just got a little bit of, bit of class about her, hasn't she, when she receives the ball. There goes Jakobsen. Challenge coming in from Hendrik. It's still good to see Sweden play in their proper golden shirts, though, isn't it? I mean, what is this blue about, <laughs> really? You know, you, you expect a Germany play in the German. I mean, the Swedes should play in the yellow or the yeah, gold. I'm with you in that. I mean, that's the second strip. <laughs> now, Fischer is moving to the near side, right on the post here, as Germany get ready to make another change here. Fischer having a chat with Sager, who's trying to block off the movement of Angara just behind her. Just look at that for a bunch right on the place. It's all about the quality of the delivery, and the delivery was not good. There's Fokusen, who does well to get a foot in. Sjogren into Aslani. Aslani, she finds Sega into Rubinson. Rubinson, was it a handball? It was indeed. Yeah, a lot of teams do that now on, on set pieces, especially on corners. They just crowd the goalkeeper out and then make it difficult for them to come out and punch or, or collect. Post is coming in. The Wolfsburg midfield player for Alex Pop. Twenty fifth appearance today. Again, a relatively young international career so far for the Wolfsburg midfielder. Sega right on the back post here. Sjogren needs to deliver something of quality. Her corner kicks haven't been. As Lani Jakobsen also in there. And so too is Fischer. Fischer makes the jumps. What a good goal from Sega. Back post. That was beautifully delivered by Sjogren. And what a fine headed goal that is. So interesting, you just saying about it. Uh, set piece delivery hasn't been very good. That was an excellent free kick, wasn't it? Just delivered to the far post. And, and Sega, just if you watch her run, she actually peels off. And again, free, free header. But because there was so much pace on the delivery, all she had to do was direct the ball back across goal. What a game we've got now. Wow. 2-0 down to 3-2 up. And Feist, who just came on, was easily bustled yeah. out of the way there. I've actually just seen that it was actually her marking. And, and when you first come into the game, it's probably quite difficult to get up to the pace of, of things. And you could see... That's why they said never change at a set play, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, what a game we've got here. There goes Rubinson. You've got to give the Swedes a huge amount of credit here because they just, those two goals inside a minute, minute and a half, and it was just, they just brushed it off and got on with their game and have done what they've done. And they've looked a significant threat in this second half. They really have. They've shown so much character to, to come back into the game initially, but then quality when they've got back into it. Well, we got the world champions beaten earlier on today and the world's number one nation just about maybe to be beaten. What could be a famous win here for Sweden, the first of four, six years or so. What a confidence boost that would be for, for Sweden. But I just think every time Germany go forward, they look dangerous. Still think there's more goals in this one. Well, Nida Fischer and two goals from Lottie Schelin in that victory back in 2009. They ended up 3-2 that day, but they were the ones that were 3-0 up. Here's Rubinson. 
that's the thing with any German team, they never ever give up. They will keep going until the 90 plus minute. And they hate losing. So I think there's more to come. Good strong run this is by Lauder into Anyamitag. Marazan, who's been peripheral to say the least in the second half, or almost actually, not in the second half, but since the goal went in, we didn't really see an awful lot of it after that. No, she's, she's been quite quiet, hasn't she? And I think that's what she's, you know, you've got to always be aware of her, though. That's because she's got that quality to, to do something magic like that. So even if she's quiet, you have to make sure you, you know where she is and, and be aware that she's that goal threat. She's really impressed me today, though, Lauder. She's played well. Jakobsen just missing out that time. Falkerson making the challenge. Marazan getting stuck in. Mitag providing the width here for Kramer. Mitag getting into the box. Sasic is there as well. Marazan on the edge of the penalty area. And swept clear by Falkerson. That's going to be a free kick to Sweden. <laughs> See, she's been on the end of some rough treatment in this game. Not her. Aslani. She's just used to it, isn't she, Aslani? I think because she's that sort of player. She's got such quick feet. Again, doesn't get up and moan at the referee. Nothing really, just gets on with it. Yeah, that's what it's, it's good to see. Sjogren, who has produced one moment of real magic in this game. And it was that delivery from the free kick that led to that goal by Sega. Well, you really do wonder what she said in that first half. She's having a bit of a nightmare, Sylvie Knight. But to be perfectly honest, this is, this is a tune-up, really, and nothing more. They will hate losing, especially against rivals such as Sweden. Well, they do have a tendency to get it right when it matters, Germany. They do, like you say, this is just their experience for the World Cup, and it's good experience, and it's you want to win it, you want to do well in this, because you, you gain that momentum that will carry you on into the World Cup, but, like you say, as long as they get it right in the World Cup, that's the main thing. Quarter of an hour here to go. The architect of a great revival and a famous victory, maybe for Sweden, if they can hold on here. Here's Henrik. Into Mitag. Rather telegraphed her intentions there. The Sega couldn't bring it under control. Jopoltz out to loud air. Sasic waiting in the penalty area now as well. Hendricks on the overlap here. It's a poor ball from her though. Gives it to Sega. And here's Jakobsen. Does like to turn and go down the outside, doesn't she? As opposed to turn and go in field. Yeah, she does. She's got that pace to get round the, the outside. And you can see she's, she's employed a, a, a left side position more so than, than central. And I think she's got quite a lot of joy from that. So she seems to be sticking out there. There's Fisher into Rubinson. Well, it's up to Germany now to come to Sweden. Not very often we see Germany in this position late on in games where they are literally chasing the game. And Sjögren into Fischer again. Rubinson goes scampering down the flank once again. This is good possession football, this, from Sweden. And again, trying to drop it into the channel. 
Yeah, they're just passing the ball around and letting Germany chase a little bit. But what's different from the first half is the fact that Germany were all over them. As soon as the defenders got the ball, there was one player, there was two players. They don't seem to be doing that in the second half. They so look tired. They do. They really do. So whether they give it their all in the first half and now it's 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 telling, but again, that's very unlike a German side to get tired. There goes Jakobsen, gives it away. Sasic dropping very deep here now. Mitag has gone on the overlap. Not going to be needed. Mitag, she's still in there. Fisher with the interception. Feist battling away, but gives away the free kick as well. Well, all this done without the most famous female Swedish player of them all. A lot of sharing. There's a lot of questions to be asked. Obviously, you want that sort of player back in because she's she's world class. But who would you drop from the Swedish team from the second half performance? Not many. Kem is about to come on. Kemi coming in and Hendricks going off. And there's that little faint touch of Aslani. She's just so aware of players around her. You can just pop it off. One and two touches. Germany's next game, remember, is against China on Friday. Just looking for where the creative spark is going to come from, from Germany. I mean, you'd look at the lineup, you'd think, well, you know, Marazan is, is the key player, but we've seen so little of it in possession. There's Angara with that incredible error, but it's the goal from that angle. Yeah. She has so much still to do. She really did, and, and the composure shown was unbelievable. Again, young player, doesn't always play but she's definitely staked the claim to, to be a, a full starter, especially first half worked really hard, but second half she showed that little bit of quality, especially with the goal, but very unlike Angara to... I know she does do... She's got a tendency to do crazy things sometimes, but that was very crazy. Listen, oh, Aslani was close there. It was a very timely interception, to say the least. And there is Sega's third goal. Keep it closer, Ida, this time, that's for sure. As they get ready to make a bit of a charge in here now, Fisher has dropped the right to the outside of the penalty area. There's Jakobsen and Aslani. Of Fisher and Sembrandt. Sembrandt's making a move. Fisher's making a move as well. Aslani's touch wasn't great that time. Shogun got away with it. Doesn't really get a lot of pace on the ball. Feist with the clearance. It's only going as far again as Sega. It's good play from Sega. Rather than just giving possession away. Vensing's headed clearance. Darkvist is down there. Leopold's into Feist. Sega leaves it. Kevin's throw, it's only a tenth appearance today, the Tabina Potsdam defender. Germany, of course, in the World Cup, they open against the Ivory Coast in Ottawa. They've got Norway, that's not going to be easy. Uh, and Thailand, I think you can safely say from that three, Germany will qualify. Yeah. Norway, perhaps the team that will give them the sternest test, but 
we don't get to see an awful lot of the Ivory Coast women or, for that matter, the Thai girls. Yeah, and I suppose sometimes playing against the unknown is, is, is uh, Yeah, difficult. absolutely. One thing is you can be sure of is they will know all about Germany. Yeah, definitely. Uh, can they construct something then from a set play here? Kemmer over the ball. Leaves it for Marazan. Flick on by Sasic. Seven minutes to go here. Urgency from Germany as Kramer has it. Feist available. Shogun loses out. Kramer. And Fisher wins it in the air first. Falkerson looking for Aslani. Venzing gets muscled out of it here. Jakobsen is coming up to join her. Jakobsen will slot this in. Oh, this is very good from Sweden. Brilliantly done. Venzing's error. She gets caught. Aslani really did pick a pocket there. And teed it up beautifully for Jakobsen. And it is 4-2 and a little dance of delight there for Pearson Yeah, I think there might be a little song, like we mentioned, at full time, because Sweden in this second half have been unbelievable. Eslani hasn't really been in the game that much, but when she's been in the game, she's created, she's made things happen, and there, terrible mistake from Benzing initially. Eslani picks the ball up, and we spoke about that quality in possession to find the pass, you know, instead of shooting when you shouldn't shoot, Jakobsen was in so much space, just put it on a plate for her, and a lovely, composed finish again for a, a second goal of the game. Well, you can't quite believe what you're reading here. And if you've just come in and switched on, after a minute and a half of this game, Germany led by two goals to nil. Is Kebe. But they literally have rested on their laurels here. There's no doubt about it. It's been a lacklustre, below-par performance, this, by Germany in every single respect. There's Kramer. And there is something to be said, isn't there, about that saying of, of scoring too early because, like you say, they have, they scored the two goals and then they stopped playing, really. They created a couple really of chances, it. yeah, but Sweden got themselves back into it. I don't think Germany ever thought that this was going to happen. I don't think we ever thought this no. was going to happen, actually. <laughs> and it's, it's when it goes from being just one of those off days to being... A nagging cause for concern for Sylvie Knight. I mean, we saw them play against England and how well and how comfortable they were in that game. But here, they've been got at. They really haven't. And when Sweden have attacked them, when they've got them at pace, defensively, they've not looked as strong as, as what we know the German sides normally are. That's what they build themselves on. Great self-belief here shown by the Swedes to come back. Now, is Lauda going to get on this? And don't, let's not forget the chances that Germany missed at the end of the half as well. And that big miss by Mitag. Germany have had their opportunities in this game. They've taken two. They have blown another at least two good chances here. Sweden getting ready to make... Another change, this will be Charlotte Rollin, who's going to come in here. There's Marazan. Sembrat brings it away, Venzing. Oh, again, terrible ball. And they're in again here, Aslani. Now can she put the... Game completely out of reach here. No, not quite. Kran. Kran did well there defensively. Stayed with Aslani. Angra came out this time, not as, as rash. Just, just closed it down, you can see. But good defending by both there. Rolin is about to come in here. And uh, Sjögren is going off. It was her delivery from the set play that gave Sega the third goal for Sweden in this game. 
The veteran still has a role to play, that is for sure. Ron Linkoping playing a 75th appearance here for the Swedish national team. And again, there it is. Just look at that goal line, choked up with players. Well, the deliveries have fallen just a bit short here. Fisher there, Jakobsen right in front of the keeper. And again, very nearly squeezing it onto that near post. Keme got it clear. I think that's the importance of the delivery. When you've got all the players around the goalkeeper, it's got to go right on the goalkeeper. It can't fall short. And on that's a very good one. And Angara standing firmly and getting a good solid fist to it. That's exactly what I meant. That's that's the delivery that you want. Because the goalkeeper's on sight until the very last minute and she does ever so well to just punch that over. Here she goes again, Rubinson. Fisher on the edge of the area will begin to make a move as that's drilled across. And it's dropped very kindly for Falkerson, but it was a bit half-hearted that from Falkerson. She didn't really believe herself that she had the quality to score from that, and it sails beyond, thankfully, for Angara. Well, are we seeing... A, another potential challenge, perhaps, from Europe emerging. We knew that, that Sweden were a good team. Did we believe that they were good enough to beat Germany 4-2 after having a two-goal start? I don't think we did. <laughs> I don't think we did. I think we'd be lying if we said uh, we thought that this was going to be the score at the end. They looked all over the show in the in the first 10, 15 minutes, Sweden. Couldn't find a pass. They couldn't mark a player. But mentally... Unbelievable to come back from that. The character that they've shown, the, the belief in themselves. Yeah, it's a great achievement for Sweden and Pierce Sundar. And I'm sure that's something that she does instill in her players that belief. It's loud air into Assassin. She's had a quiet day four additional minutes i mean sweden if there was the the group of death in in the world cup i mean you you think they're in it yeah. aren't they really nigeria the usa and australia i mean that is not a an easy group to actually emerge from so they're going to need all of this type of mental self-belief that even when they go two goals down any goals behind that they've got the character and they believe that they can come back and win a game and the ability to do so and, and like you say that is a, a very very tough group but i think you know pl playing in these sort of tournaments playing against top nations like germany and winning when you're in the world cup and you're playing against another team and you think we've already come back two nil down from against germany we can do it again of course yeah because you're just going to be able to recall incidents because the, you know the majority of these players are going to be there there's no doubt about that uh we'll probably have shelling in there but i'll tell you what to to dislodge uh, jakobsen and aslani based on what they've done here today they've played really well together they've linked up well and jakobsen just seems to to be growing every game Reminded not to go away because we've got another game coming up for you live. It is the French in action against Portugal. Remember one of those stars who we saw emerge from obscurity last year is in the French squad, full squad these days now, Claire Lavoger. Came in a bit of a hurry. Well, Germany haven't got it easy on Friday either because they take on the Chinese. So that's going to be, again, a different type of test, obviously. But nonetheless, it's going to be difficult. 
is Marazan. I think that's what's so good about, you know, tournament football that you have to forget this game because you've got another game so so but how quickly. easy is it to do that i mean it's not easy is it because you you know demons will haunt you really yeah. after this certainly as far as the germans are concerned now i mean vencing will have a bit of a nightmare i mean she she deflected one in yeah. and then she's given the ball literally let aslani shake her off and run off yeah, they don't get dictated to in games like this germany no and i think that's where mentally you've got to be strong and i think they'll they'll analyze this game they'll probably watch the game tonight and then it's the they the focus then is is china on on friday so you have to try and forget it because i think if you if you continue with that you, you've just got to as a player think i want to make things right i want to play well against china and you know i, I feel for china because i think germany are going to come out and try and put things right off the head of Rolin. There's Sega. Now oh, there's been a bit too much of that at times from Germany. And it's all very well when the juices are flowing and the game, you're on your game, as to to, uh, to quote an Emma Hayes saying, you got your A game there. <laughs> I mean, they haven't got their A game here. They haven't, and I think that's when you, you flicks and tricks, you don't do them. You keep the ball, you keep it moving, and you do things simple. When you're 2-0 up, it's fine. There's Kemic, and that is the final kick of the game. And this has been a big, big day, this for Sweden. Victories over Germany are very few and far between. This is only the seventh in their international playing history. Germany normally dominate, not today. They took a two goals to nil lead, but how Sweden hit back, produced the best performance for many a year. They've beaten Germany 4 2. Wow. Well, don't go away because we've got more drama to come. Wayne Boyce and Emma Hayes will no doubt have a, a few things to say about this game. Whilst they are admiring the potential World Cup winning talents of the French against Portugal. That is coming up live in just a couple of minutes.